This is the Trigotronic M277 Panning Tube VCA and Overdrive Effect. Among other things, it's useful for taking nice, polite synth lines like this. And turning them into sounds like this. Or maybe something a bit tamer. Now, of course, there's a lot more subtlety to what you can get out of the M277 beyond that. In addition to its amplitude and drive controls, there's also a lot of variations depending on where you put it in the patch. Do you put it at the end after an entire synth voice? Do you put it in place of your normal VCA? Or do you put it before the filter? I'll be looking at all of those, but first let me give you an overview of this module. First, I have to mention, it comes with some of the best swag I've seen. Cool patches, chrome-plated hex head bolts, they even give you a hex head wrench to go with it. Look, there's even washers in there, no rack rash. And they even pay homage to Luis and B.B. Baron, creators of the first electronic soundtrack, Forbidden Planet. So, a lot of cool credentials there. Now, before I sing even more praises for this module, Let's get anything you might consider to be a negative out of the way. First off, it's an odd number of HP wide, 15 HP. Now, I happen to have a case that's 197 HP wide, so I don't mind odd HP modules. There's cool 3 and 5 HP modules from Erica, Bastille, and others. But I know this will drive some of you crazy. It's rather deep, 50 millimeters. The power connector is not the deepest part on the back. It's actually an electrolytic capacitor. And it also projects out pretty far with these tubes. Although, to be honest, it's not much worse than a patch cable projects out. So if you can close the lid of your modular case with your patch cables in, it'll probably clear the tubes just fine. It is a power-hungry module. It wants half an amp on plus 12 alone. And when it starts up, it wants almost three quarters of an amp. That's going to swamp a lot of power supplies. For example, it's too much for my Row Power 40, considering everything else I have in this case. Therefore, Trigotronic makes available an optional power supply, a little wall wart, that takes over the entire plus 12 volt load. It'll draw nothing on the plus 12 bus inside your modular case. Now make sure that even if you use this, that you keep the ribbon cable connected inside. It's still needed for minus 12 and for 5 volt. And Trigotronic warns you will cause damage if you try to power it up with only this external supply. I plugged both my power supply for this whole case and this optional supply into my power strip Everything's fine. And yes, it does indeed have tubes. Now you may worry that with all of this power, that the tubes get a bit warm and they put a knob right in between them. Well, honestly, the tubes don't get that hot. A little bit of an afterglow, but not too bad. And they only have a slight color glow inside. You will want to let them warm up about 15 minutes before you start using the module. This is a pure tube circuit. There's no integrated circuits hiding somewhere to buffer it. That's cool, and it can cause you some issues. It's very sensitive to the impedance of the modules connected to. For example, if I was to connect it directly to my Happy Nerding Out module, which I otherwise like very much, I'll pull this green cable, plug it in there. You'll hear I barely have any level. But if I run this output through a buffered molt, like what's built into the data for its inputs. I've safeguarded any impedance interaction. And now I have a nice loud sound again. And speaking of loud, this module has a huge amount of gain. So much so that Trogatronic says you could even consider using it as a dual stereo preamp. I find that it quite eagerly goes up against the plus or minus 10 volt rails. That is the practical limit for sound levels in neural rack systems. So quite often, I am attenuating this on the output just to make sure I don't overdrive things downstream. For example, if I was to plug this into my mother, the mother's auxiliary input only likes to have plus or minus 5 volts, not 10 volts. In general, having attenuators around this module will allow you to get more out of it. One more thing I want to throw in, these tubes are high-gain ECC83 types. If you don't need that much gain and you would prefer a more mellow sound, you can replace the tubes with ECC82s or 81s. These are in sockets. They're pretty easy to remove and put back. I've already done that myself as a test. 
Now this module has two identical VCAs, the left and right side. Each VCA has an amplitude and a drive control. Amplitude is the output level. Although it's not a simple attenuator, you'll see it has some unusual behavior as you start to turn it down. The drive is basically a tube overdrive or a clipping circuit. Flattens out the tops of your waveforms. It really helps emphasize the bass. And this module does indeed add a bass boost to the sound. If I play low, you hear it sounds nice and fat. But as I go higher, the sound starts to die away. I can crank up a little more amplitude to compensate for that, but then I might blow away the bass. Now usually you're playing within a limited range on your keyboard anyway, so this would not be an issue. But if you are planning on playing very wide keyboard runs with this as your output processor or as your VCA, you might consider playing around with an external VCA to do a little bit of leveling based on your note you're playing on your keyboard. Maybe attenuate the bass a little bit, boost the high end a little bit, just to keep the output of this more level. Both the amplitude and drive controls become attenuators when you plug control voltages into these input jacks. The one thing that's missing is an input attenuator, and I find that input level also affects how this module sounds. And again, I'll get to that in a minute as well. In addition to being a dual VCA, this module can also be a stereo panner. The left signal is indeed copied to the right signal. If I were to patch it in quickly for you, let's take the output, buffer it, through my data, take that output, and plug that into a right channel over here, you'll hear, indeed, I can pan left and right. Now I'll be showing stereo applications for this, including using control voltage pan a little bit later on. Unlike amplitude and drive, the pan inputs do not convert these knobs into attenuators. It merely defeats them. So again, you might want to have an external utility mixer to process the signals you're using to control the pan circuit. So that's an overview of this module. I want to show it in three different applications. One, as a final output processing module, placed after your entire patch in a system. Two, as a replacement for your normal VCA in a patch, typical filter into VCA into output. And three, placing this VCA in front of your filter. And how does that change the tone? So let's dive in.